Oh, it's recording. All right, my little loves. So, um, good news. No, uh, no new injuries thus far. Is that what you say? Right, now, if you don't know, it means you don't follow me on Instagram, does it? Possibly. If you don't know this, does it mean you don't follow me on Instagram? Ah, my hand. I'm still bandaged up from last week where I split my hand and I am currently handling a four day, no, when did I last wash my hair? Sunday? I don't even think I washed it Sunday, I think I washed it Saturday. So, some would say greasy, but I can't because I've got stitches, so, and also don't even talk to me about the washing up. Here we are. And um, it is things I have learned since going vegan. So if you do not know, did you just hear my shoulder pop? I decided to go, I decided to do 30 days of being vegan in July. On Father's Day, I saw my dad and he had gone vegan or plant-based. My stepmom's kind of always flirted with the idea anyway. They're really, really healthy. They cook, she's an incredible cook. And my dad decided to do it for health reasons. Uh, I think it more shocked him that uh, he was getting older, I guess, <laughs> and he w wants to be really healthy. So that kind of inspired me because my I just kind of thought like, if dad can do it, I can do it. And I decided for, as part of my happiness project, uh, for the whole of July, I would do, I would be vegan. And it was fine. Absolutely fine. And then, uh, it's kind of carried on, I guess. It's, I feel great on it. I feel absolutely amazing. And now, no lines, lines. I don't know why the sun suddenly decided to come out as I film. That is bright. I've always loved the idea of being vegan. I've always loved the health benefits and the, how much it encourages you to eat more vegetables and lentils. Plus then add like my hippie and my spiritual side. I get, I get, I used to get asked all the time or people would just assume that I would be vegan. Like I would go away with work and I would eat some like meat or something. They'd be like, do you eat that to you? And I'm like, guys, I'm not vegan. I just must look it. But the reason, so I've always liked the idea, but the reasons why I never have are basically for the fitness gains. It was the whole, shit, I'm gonna have to eat carbs. Shit, no, where am I gonna get my protein from? It was, uh, you have to cook a lot more from scratch. So how am I gonna weigh that? How am I gonna prep that? And yeah, it's, and there were so many different reasons why I couldn't go for it. And it was all based on aesthetics and that control around food. I feel like being vegan, especially when you go out to eat and things like that, the choices are very limited. Previously, I would be able to go out for food and order a chicken chicken breast burger without the bun, without chips and add salad. So I've got chicken and salad for dinner, right? It's, it, I, was very, I was very much able to control what I ate. I was also really, really protein focused. Whereas as soon as I made that transition, it's like, you have to give up all control. Now, I do need to do a disclaimer. That's how I viewed it. There are plenty of people that are going through like that break from diet culture and stuff like that, that actually turn to veganism as a way of controlling their calories and a way of consuming less. I'm talking from my own experience. I was just focused on protein and low carb and veganism obviously really challenges the protein because you have to look elsewhere for protein and also really challenges the carbs because I thought it's like well what else like you like a vegan diet is actually very heavily in carbohydrates because vegetables and fruits are carbohydrates right lentils and beans actually have a high carbohydrates um profile that's like my background and these are some things I've learned number one you do not need as much protein as what the fitness industry tells you now this protein is obviously like the holy holy god of everything at the minute the protein bars are like in tesco i remember like previously when i first was in the gym and stuff like protein bars and protein was was nowhere really taking pro i remember when i started taking protein and it was very much still advertised and marketed to men rather than women whereas now it is literally the holy grail like you can buy like protein crisps and stuff like that right but 
we don't actually need as much as what everyone's telling you. There were some times that I was eating like two, like 170 to 200 grams of protein a day. And I probably eat around, I would say I still eat a very high protein vegan diet. And I would sit at around a hundred, like maybe like 80 to a hundred grams now, which actually is like that's still considered quite high protein, but compared to what I used to eat, I was literally having like yogurt, vegan protein, chicken, beef, like the whole lot, and there was just so much protein, and we're constantly told protein, 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 and I still think, I'm still a very massive advocate for protein. If you're wanting to lose weight, or you're wanting to have a physique goal and get leaner, that and or build muscle, protein is essential, right? It really helps you keep satisfied, and it's really good for our muscles and, um, and our recovery. But it's not the be all and end all. And actually the protein bars and stuff like that, like you don't need huge amounts. So as a vegan, you can still, like I said, like I'm actually eating like around 80 to 100 grams of protein, sometimes even more than that, especially if I use vegan protein powder, that I can sometimes hit the same. I, I, so I tried to, but when I was tracking and I was aiming for like 120 to 150 grams of protein a day. I can sometimes eat that plus more on a vegan diet because you're eating like beans and quinoa together or you're sprinkling nuts on your salad and stuff like that. That I There's actually so many more diverse ways of getting protein and you can actually do it on a vegan diet. There's so many more flavors and you can pack so much more in. And because I think you have to think so much more, they taste even better. I'm also very, think, I'm very aware that vegetables can taste bland, right? So I'm adding more flavors in and I'm adding different different like, herbs and spices in and also to get different, to making sure that I'm getting protein and stuff, you're combining different foods. So I'm having like beans and lentils and stuff. And it's just so much more exciting and the flavors are just banging. Whereas previously I would have just like chucked some chicken in the air fryer and put some sweet potato and had some ketchup. Whereas like now, it's so much more exciting, I love it. Number three is meat substitutes and soya-based stuff. I personally don't struggle with any of that. I know that's a concern for some people. I'll bang it. And they taste like more or less exactly the same. I would say they're not as chewy, like you don't get that like chewy like mm, from like a beef burger or like a chicken breast or something like that. It's a lot softer, but they're banging. The, I can't remember what company it is. Beyond Burger. Get one of those, they're banging. My camera might die, so I'll be quick. Number four. Number four is I actually feel healthier on the inside. Number five slash four would be that uh, it has completely solved all of my digestion problems. I no longer suffer from constipation. Ooh, ooh. Sorry if that's TMI, but it's the truth. <laughs> Uh, it has also really, really forced me to eat more carbs. Obviously, as a, on a vegan diet, you have to because there's carbs in a lot of the protein sources that you're going for and things like that. So that's really helped, which has meant that it has given me a, a lot more energy. I feel so much more energized. But I would say it's also very, very easy to underfuel on a vegan diet because you haven't got the meat, which for me, meat used to come combines such a huge amount of my calories and a chicken breast compared to like a block of like tofu or something is that there's quite a big difference in uh, say like a, a, a burger compared to a block of tofu there's quite a bit of difference in in makeup in, in in what those profiles are so like fat and protein which will keep you fuller for longer and increase your calories so I have had to really make sure that I am making sure that my plates are full of a good fat, a good carbohydrate and a good protein source. And I'm I'm actually conscious of how many calories I'm eating rather than just volume because it's so easy to eat high volume and low calories on a vegan diet because it's veg, right? Okay, I'm I'm running out of time, so I'm going to reel them off. So well, I don't even know what number we're on. Another thing, so should we say like, I don't know. I'll just say another thing, right? So another thing is I cannot believe how much, oh no, my camera. Okay, I'm gonna have to be really, 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 really quick. I don't know what number we're on, let's say six. Number six of, number six of things I've learned through going vegan is that meat is, uh, meat? <laughs> Milk is hidden in absolutely everything. Crisps, bread. I brought some bread rolls the other day, milk in them. I was like, are you joking? The magpies ate them. 
Another thing as well is I've actually got to the stage that meat and dairy makes me feel a little bit sick. Not the taste, mm, dairy makes me feel, bleh. yeah, no, that's not good. That doesn't sit right in the stomach. Meat, I still like can appreciate the taste, but the thought of drinking an animal's milk, uh, the thought of eating an animal, ooh, the flesh. I don't know if I could touch raw meat when I have to avoid the meat aisles in supermarkets now. At the start it was because I would be tempted to pick up my usual, whereas now it's like, oh, that makes me feel a little bit, ooh, like raw meat. <laughs> and that's what it's got to, that's the, that's the stage I'm at. I'd actually be really interested to know how my body would react to meat now. I wouldn't, but that would be interesting, right? I've also found that animals have got cuter. I legit think this is a thing. I look at animals and I'm like, guys, sorry I used to eat you. Another thing I've learned is please avoid first dates. I'd made this mistake. Avoid first dates when you have just transitioned into a vegan and there some time after. So I would say it's been literally within the past week or so, no, maybe within the last couple of weeks that my gut has actually got used to being a vegan. So that's like around six weeks, I would say, um, of my gut being all over the place. The wind is real and the stomach pains is real and I started seeing someone at the start of my vegan transition and um, yeah, yeah, there were some uncomfortable times when you're on a date and your stomach is like, and you're like, oh no, oh no. Anyway, uh, that leads on to another point, is find yourself a vegan. Get yourself a vegan in your life. They make life so, so much easier. I'm now seeing a vegan. I make life so much easier. So it makes life so much easier because then you're just like both thinking along the same things, like you're both on the same vibe. So like, if you go to a restaurant, it's gotta be vegan. I think it would be a lot harder for me if I, I think I could do it if I was single still, but if I was with someone that wasn't a vegan, I think that would be a lot more difficult. But falafel wraps are my ultimate fave. I haven't had one in a while actually, but in summer, like July, August time, I was having them constantly and they are banging. I just love them so, so much. And then finally, I guess I'm waiting for my period now. I'm a little bit nervous about whether my third period will come because I was so, so poorly a few weeks ago that I don't know whether that might have messed up my body. I'm, fingers crossed, but I'm, I'm, I'm fine if it's not and I'm great if it is. But since going vegan, I, within two weeks of being vegan, I actually got my first period and then I had my second period. So to me, that was clarity that the vegan life actually worked for me and didn't go against me because that's what I was most nervous about is transitioning as a vegan while I was still trying to get my period back. I was very aware that I didn't want to be restricting or I was very aware that like making those sorts of changes could change my body and I didn't know kind of like where my hormones were while I was trying to get my period back. I was also very aware that I didn't want it to be another restrictive thing. So I didn't want to like end up like going down a spiral again of being like, no, can't eat that, can't eat that, I'm vegan, like sort of thing. And it becoming that kind of like addiction that fitness and clean eating used to be. But I'm really, really grateful that it hasn't. Like I feel great. I eat chocolate. I feel like my food is like even more diverse than it ever has been. I, I feel really, really, really good on it. Yeah, I'm taking supplements, so I'm taking B12 and um, vitamin D. Yeah, overall I feel really good. So this is like a big brain fart about me being vegan. Uh, again, like I said, just a massive disclaimer, especially if you watch me because you're following my amenorrhea journey and, and you're here about like breaking free from, from diet and like loving yourself a little bit more. This is the disclaimer that I would never encourage anyone to make such drastic food and lifestyle changes while they're trying to do that because it may trigger some like I said, like I was, I was a little concerned about, um, and my feet are going dead, um, about whether I would get restricted thoughts. So I'd make sure that you're, if you are thinking of doing it, then do it from, um, when you're in a really, really good place. And I would also always work with a professional if you were going through that. I don't think I could have done this. I, I definitely could have done this journey and get myself in a physical and mental position without the help of, uh, Rena McGregor, 
who is a dietitian who helped me and also I've had like different therapy and Reiki sessions which have just helped my self-esteem and meditation and stuff like that so I think I was in a very good place for me to be able to transition into vegan so if you are thinking about it just make sure that you are kind of like aware of what mental state you're in before you make any of those changes but yes that is the things I have learned since going through being vegan and that is another requested video ticked off my list if there are any videos that you would like to see from me then just comment down below i've got quite a big list of different requested videos which i'm making my way through if i feel inspired to so if there are anything i've got pins and needles if there is anything that you want me to do a video about then let me know if not then forever hold your peace no forever hold your peace forever hold your i don't know what it is anyway have a lovely day uh please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're on youtube if you're on instagram then just like a little share and like a little comment and a little like would be really really would i would be really really grateful for have a lovely day or night or wherever you are and i'll see you next week bye